Hi my friends, we continue with the permissions. You know, it is one of the most important topics of DRF. The friends who watched the previous video will remember we learned how to write custom permissions. Let's get back to our topic. You know, we were able to add comments to our books. Uh, for example, let's see, uh, I'm going to add a comment for Les Miserables book. The ID of the book is one, so let's say book slash one and add comment. I can write whatever I want, you know. The viewer manually determining who the owner of comment was. I need to write some name to make comment, so let's say Jahid Arf. He is a famous mathematician. Okay, if I click post, I could add a comment. It's not going to be like that in a real project. We will have registered users and the only those registered users will be able to make comments. What I mean is, let's say uh, I want to add a comment, but I am already logged in as admin. Without having to specify the owner of comment here, Django should handle that itself. Also, no one should be able to delete or change others' comments. For those who know classic Django, they have already been familiar to what I'm talking about. Let's get started. We will understand better in practice. First of all, we need to make some changes on comment model. Let's go to models. You see that I use a char field for owner of comments. But what I want is owner of comments should be registered users, not anonymous users. I also need to know which comment belong to which user. Because as I said, only the person who made the comment will be able to make changes on it. We are going to use Django user model. Normally, we could write the user model ourselves from scratch. However, Django has already prepared it for us and uh, it handles the authentication in the background. If you are not very familiar with these issues, we will examine authentication issues in, in detail in our third video series. Let's import the user model now. As we create models here, Django has its own models like user. The Django has set some capabilities for them. For example, uh, we can log in and log out using the user model. We are going to set the user model as foreign key here, but before setting, we have a problem. You know, we, we have already created a few comments, and uh, if I use foreign key directly here, Django will throw an error. Let me show you. Let's go to the admin panel. You see we have some comments and go to detail. We wrote some names for owner of comment. Since we are still in the development phase, I will delete all the comments. If we had to make some modifications on a field like owner of comment, in a real project we would have found another solution not to lose comments. But it's not our current topic. Ok, we are done. Let's go back to model. Now I can use the foreign key. Ok, I will create it from scratch. If you remember from the previous lessons, we also need to determine what to do if the owner of comment is deleted. I will use cascade which means when the user is deleted, related comments will be removed. Ok. That's all actually. Now we need to make migrations quickly. I save it. I stop the terminal. I will do the migrations quickly. We need to rerun the server. Ok, now go back to admin panel again. I refresh the page. 
Okay, we were able to make the foreign key linking successfully. We can see the our registered users here. Let's quickly add a comment. Let's choose a book, Les Miserables, standard user. Let's say comment one. I save it. The go to book list. I refresh the page. My comment is here. Let's go to details of the comment. The ID is one comments one. As you can see here, the owner of comment returns ID of the user who, who made the comment. But I want to see the username instead of ID. We could change that easily thanks to serializer methods. For those who don't know, there is a video about it on my channel. I left the link above. Let's go to where our serializers were. It's our comment model. I'm going to copy the name of relevant field from models. Owner of comment, I copied it. I save it here. I paste it here, sorry. Now I need string related field from serializers. We can access it. String related field. Okay. For those who don't know, I can briefly summarize the string related field as follows. For example, let's go back to models. We return some uh, some fields in the str method. Here, the string related field shows the fields we return from the str method, and the Django returns the username in the str method of the user model. Now we will see the username from now on instead of id. Okay, let's save it. Let's save the serializer and go back to Chrome again. Refresh the page. Okay, we see the username. Now I am going back to comment view. I will add a permission class uh, to the comment create API view. Because you know, we only want authenticated users to add comments and the others can only view comments. So let's do it. You don't need to write a custom permission for that. You know, you, you remember we have a is authenticated or read only permission class which comes with Django can handle what I want. So I determined it and then I save it. Okay, I go back to Chrome and uh, I will try to add a new comment. But let's see the books first. Okay, I will add a comment for uh, for this book, whose ID is two. So books slash two slash add comment. You know, we we could add comments here, and uh, I am an authenticated user now. I am admin. Let's try to add a comment. Let's say example comment one. I click post. Hmm we get an uh, integrity error. As you can see here, it is asking for the owner of comment ID to, to create the comment. This error will be familiar to friends who follow the series. I will leave a link above for friends who haven't watched the related lesson. Go back to views. We, we already overwrite the perform create method to capture the uh, book ID. So this integrity error comes just while the perform create method is running. How about we get the ID information of the owner of comment? You know we have a self here and the gen and the create API view is extended from generic API view and mixing. So all of these classes are inherited from each other. In short, I want to say that uh, the self has a lot of information including the request. So I want to show you what it has. Let's print it. 
I want to see the cookies. Let's, let's try to see it. I go back to Chrome and refresh the page. It will uh, it will do the post request again. So we will see it here. Where is the self? Okay, it is self. We have we print it here. So as you can see, it it has some uh, information here. Session ID. CRF token and uh, some other information or or we can access the data we post I want to show you let's write data sorry I save it go back to Chrome again refresh page now we will access the data we sent from uh, from the browser the CRF middleware token and yes it is our data. We can even access information about users via request. So let's write self.request.user. I save it. Go back to Chrome, refresh again. As you can see, we have accessed the username information of the user. So we can also access the ID. Let's try it. That ID request.users.id I save it go back Chrome again yep that's it friends in fact we have uh, solved the problem just like we wrote the book ID information here I will go back to my models and uh, what was the field name owner of command I copy it I will give it to serializer so we are able to access the uh, user ID from self okay I save it I don't need to print it anymore I go back to Chrome refresh page we get an error so it it expects an instance instead of ID so if we delete the ID this uh, this becomes the instance because you, you know we can access all the information about the related user over this I mean we can use the username like this user that username or ID or email and the uh, all the information related to user I mean so it becomes our instance I save it go back to Chrome and refresh the page you have successfully added a comment now I go back to book list my comment is here okay it's great what if I want to add one more comment to, to th this book I mean the example book Let's try it. Book start and the add comment. I'll try to add another comment. Let's say example comment something. As you can see, I was able to add a comment again, but I think that is a bit unreasonable. It would be better if a user could only make one comment for each book. I sometimes see videos on YouTube. Uh, a person had made a person has made dozens of comments on the same video I don't like this kind of things therefore let's have a condition like um, uh, I don't know let's say the same user cannot add more than one comment to to a book let's do it I go back to view I will write a filter operation here so let's create a variable check. here we check if there is a comment with this book and uh, with the user the filter returns a query set we can check if the query set is empty or not so let's do it we use exist here so 
if this returns true it means the user has already made a comment for this book so I need to raise a validation error so let's import it first go to view again We will raise a validation. If this condition is true, the, the validation error will run and the all code will not be executed anymore. I mean, the code will stop here. But if this is false, the save process will be done. Let's save it and go back to Chrome. Now, you know, we have two comments from the same user. Let's delete one of them first. We already have one more comment here. I also need to delete it. Okay, we only have one comment for a uh, example book. I mean, we will try to add a comment for this book. Let's try it. I click post. We received the 400 bad request and the, we, we get the message we wrote. You cannot make more than one comment on a book. And now I'm going to log in as standard user. Let's do it. I will try to add a comment. Example comment from another user click post I was able to add comment successfully now I want to show you something let's go to book list and uh, you know the admin has a comment here and the, the idea of the comment is three let's Let's go to detail of this comment, comments 3. As you can see, the owner of comment is admin, but I am logged in as standard user. So this comment does not belong to me, but I can still make changes on it. I can update, you can see I, I could update it, or even I can delete it. Here, we need to take control of that users should only be able to make changes on their own comments they shouldn't able to make any changes on other users comments we are going to cover that in the in the following video thanks for watching i will end the video here i hope uh, it was helpful see you in the next video